Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew. If you are a first time visitor and haven't yet signed the guest book, if you could do so in the narthex on your way out. Um, on behalf of Joan and myself, I would like to thank everyone who participated in the Christmas shoebox program. It's, it's been a very wonderful experience. Tomorrow the boxes will move on to their next stop and then there they'll go to South Carolina to, to be distributed worldwide. Are there announcements from anyone in the congregation? Good morning. The sun is bright. Just a reminder that we are looking for a final head count on Thanksgiving meals by, what is today the 14th? Today. <laughs> I have no idea what day it is anymore. So um, if you would like to reserve a Thanksgiving meal for yourself or for a neighbor and you haven't done so yet, please let me know today. Thanks. It has been a very troubling week for members of St. Andrew. I would ask all here in the sanctuary, those in the parking lot, and those tuned in on Zoom to feel the presence of God, know his everlasting love. Good morning and welcome. It is a joy to be together as God's people and certainly a time when we need to be together as sisters and brothers in Christ, strengthening one another and bringing reminders of hope even in the midst of struggle. It is the 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, just to note, I was debating doing this in the children's message, but we'll have a different message for that. But uh, it's been, I think, about 10 years since we've had the 10th, 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, the length of Pentecost depends on when Easter is in the church year. So not too often that we get this many Sundays in Pentecost, just to note that. Council meet, does meet this evening. If you are uh, interested in being part of that, please get in touch with uh, either myself. Um, Art Worcester would probably be the easiest. He'll be able to send you a Zoom link uh, or any council member can help you with that. So prayer updates. Um, I, I trust and hope that uh, all of have now heard the news about uh, Susan Jensmer. Um, if you have not, I, I am sorry to uh, share with you that uh, Susan Jensmer died um, sometime between Wednesday night when she went to bed and Thursday morning. Um, very unexpected. Um, at this point, we're, there are no plans yet for uh, services. Um, but we will keep you updated on that. John's son, Jake, is with John. Um, drove nine hours on Thursday, so in answer to prayer that he arrived safely, um, we certainly do keep John and Jake and all of Susan's family in our thoughts and prayers. Erwin and Crystal are making progress, and I know they uh, have asked several times that I would share their deep appreciation for all of the support, the prayers, the cards. Um, this is, is uh, really been a very life-changing experience for them on many levels. 
um, but a reminder to them too of how much they are loved here. And I know they appreciate that. We are looking to provide a few more meals for them and Jean White has agreed to, uh, thank you, Jean, um, to agreed to coordinate that. So if you are willing and able to provide some help, please speak with Jean. And we also um, keep uh, Michelle and Dave Zinn in our prayers. Uh, they were working their way down to Florida, um, camping along the way, and in um, Elizabeth City, North Carolina, Michelle fell, um, breaking her hip and arm. Um, and so she has been hospitalized since Sunday afternoon. Um, she had surgery on Thursday, um, and it went well. Uh, so we are thankful for that. But they are uh, obviously far from their family uh, and congregation here and their congregation and friends in Florida. So a uh, difficult time. We continue to keep them in our thoughts and prayers as well. And we rejoice that Scott Dublis is home and making recovery. So very good. A tough week for St. Andrew. Let us take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship. Please rise, those who are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives you your sins for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, and Lamb of God, you gave the of the Lord. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Lord, we are glad in our hearts. And peace to us, people on earth. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, be Lord and God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Daniel. At that time, Michael, the great prince, protector of your people shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. We will read responsibly Psalm 16. God, for I take refuge in you, I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. But those who run after other gods shall have troubles multiplied. O oh Lord, you are my portion in my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My 
I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Children's message. Yeah, kind of bright there, isn't it? Well, thank you for being here today. Thank you for coming up. You want to sit over there and get out of the sun? So if I were to say, let's pray, what would be the first thing you'd probably do? Put your hands together and maybe bow your head. And that's a fine way to pray. But you know what? A lot of people in our world also pray like this, with their hands uplifted and their eyes looking up to God. And in fact, a couple of days ago, when I heard about Michelle and Dave Zinn, who were keeping in prayer, I was driving on the road. So I figured God probably didn't want me to close my eyes and bow my head at that point. But the thing that, that I want to lift up is, you know, one of the really cool things about prayer is we can do prayer anytime, in any place, okay? And we're never out of cell range with God, which is really an important thing. So like with today, with the sun shining through the windows, when you get up in the morning, you can just do a simple prayer. Wow, what a beautiful day. Thank you, God. It doesn't have to be real complicated. Right? There are other times when maybe life is being pretty difficult or we're worried about something that we might want to be a little more, you know, serious about our prayer or a little more um, planned. And, and that's a good time maybe to, to find a quiet place or maybe when we're getting ready for bed to fold our hands and bow our head and just talk to God for a little bit. Let him know what we're worried about. Or maybe at the end of the day, give him thanks for the good things that went on in the day. The point to all of this is there is really no wrong way to pray to God. We can do it in any place and in any time. And really, it's just sharing what's going on with us with God just like we'd share it with a friend or our parents. Okay? All right. Thanks for coming up today. Our second reading is from Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he had perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. 
he also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let's, let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Gospel reading for this 25th Sunday after Pentecost is from the 13th chapter of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. And Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us then, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be al alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. These are one of those mornings when I hesitate to use my usual opening of grace and peace. From Daniel, we hear that there shall be a time of anguish such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. We have Jesus' words of the destruction of the temple, the center of Jewish religious and cultural life, and that this horrific event will be accompanied by wars and rumors of wars. As we spoke earlier, for our own lives and for St. Andrew, this has been a hard week. Our hearts go out to John and Jake Popka with the death of Susan, and we grieve for ourselves as well. 
It is difficult to follow such words of suffering and struggle with the declaration, the gospel of the Lord, much less with pronouncements of grace and peace. But are we to make of all of this here at the end of this Pentecost season? As we recognized on All Saints Sunday, there are times when it is right and good to grieve, to acknowledge the pain and difficulty of life, to lament. But neither do we remain in despair. We hold on to hope. One help I found as I was preparing for today was from a study noting the ambiguity of our scripture readings today. Now, while Webster's defines ambiguity as doubtful or uncertain, it can also mean more than one correct, yet mutually exclusive answer. Ambiguity is tough. When directions or choices are clear or easily understood, when life appears simple, then it can be relatively manageable. For example, as you drive south on I-95 from Augusta, as I did this past week, heading for the bishop's convocation, you will come to a choice. 295 to Freeport or the main turnpike to Lewiston Auburn. Pretty clear options, and generally speaking, drivers are able to make their choice and keep going. Suppose instead those signs were to read one road and direction and a different road in a different direction. Now these would certainly be true statements, just not terribly helpful or informative. Much of life that confronts us can be ambiguous. It isn't so much that right or wrong are no longer important, but that information overload has made it almost impossible to have a clear understanding of which direction to take. Over the past months, we have heard again and again that a vote in favor of referendum one means the ruination of our future. But wait, a vote against it means you support devastating our environment. Over $90 million spent by energy companies on both sides, all with some, some, mind you, level of truth. Today we can find information to lead us in almost any direction. Where do we turn? When life becomes so difficult and fearful, how do we find our way? As I reflected on our lessons today, I was struck by how closely these dark words of Scripture from thousands of years ago, reflect our own situations today. For even in the midst of these dreadful words of destruction and confusion, we have words of hope. We sometimes need to look for them. We need to be ready to hear them, but they are there. Just as in our own lives, 
At times we need to look for, to seek out the good, to celebrate the victories, even in the midst of struggle. Our reading from Daniel carries the promise of delivery, of eternal life, and God's people shining like the stars of heaven. That is something in which to rejoice, something to bring hope, whether in Daniel's time or ours. Susan is certainly one of those stars now. Do not be alarmed when dreadful things come to pass, Jesus tells us, for God remains in control. Now, it is certainly true that people of faith from Daniel's time to yours and mine, we would all be far happier if God would simply put a stop to wars and persecution. If Jesus, or being Christians, followers of Jesus, could promise us that we would never come to trial or difficult times, if we never had to face surgery for cancer or to prevent amputation, to repair a broken hip, to never be confronted with the sudden death of a partner, a friend, a sister in Christ. Instead, we have the promise we read throughout Scripture that God's power, God's love for us is so vast that even in the most terrible situations, the darkness will not win. We are richly blessed here in the United States. Unlike people in the time of the disciples and Christians in other lands today, we, you and I, do not need to fear arrest or imprisonment as we seek to live out our faith in daily life, as we gather to worship our Creator. Thanks in large part to the sacrifice of our veterans. You and I enjoy a wealth today that kings of previous generations could not even dream about. If your household, not individual, if your household income is above $30,000 a year, you are in the top 1% across the world. It is also true that our lives often seem to go from one crisis to another, between work and school schedules, date deadlines and payment due dates. It sometimes seems we don't have a moment to breathe. Yet God's word of hope and peace is with us. We need to look for it at times. We need to be ready to hear and see those reminders of hope, but they are there. By God's grace and power, no matter what we face, no matter where our paths lead us, God has declared that not a hair of your head will perish. As with life itself, how we see our scriptures today has much to do 
with where we focus our attention. The disciples looked at the building where people worshipped and focused on how grand and glorious the structure was. Jesus reminds them that it is the people gathered in worship of God which is truly valuable and important. The disciples focused on schedules and demanded to know when certain things were going to be taking place. Jesus reminds them that God is in control and that they do not need to worry about what the future will bring. For God's people are called to live in the present and to trust that God will provide for their future and to celebrate the good things that God has given us this day. Jesus reminds us that we are strong, that God is with us, and that united with one another as people of God, there is no power on this earth which can take us out of God's love and care, which can defeat the people of God. So, grace and peace be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit, from God our Father and from our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ.
For those who are able, please rise. Let us together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm among, among, amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell of and enact your reconciling love. God, in your mercy. God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. As the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a shelter place in a more abundant season. God, in your mercy. God, our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all elected leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. God, in your mercy. Amen. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfire. And the first responders who support them, calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. God in your mercy. God our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreement, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. We lift before you particular situations or people aloud or silently. We thank you for our veterans, for their service and sacrifice. God, in your mercy, your prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people we have loved. Assure us your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
And now the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, be with you all. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. We continue with the offering. those who are able, please rise. Holy God, the, year, the earth is yours and everything in it. Yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending proclamation. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, the resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A feast of love is offered here for you and for all the saints. Please come.
in the parking lot or on Zoom receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ broken and shed for you. Amen. blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
For those who are able, please rise. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. Again, we have a beautiful day, so we will be singing our hymn after, if you would like to join us for that. Receive the blessing. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Bring love wherever you go. Shine light wherever it's dark. Leave blessings wherever you've been. Be kind wherever you are. Led on by the saints before us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thank you.